Yes. Hang out on the Arrows Live. Live. Let's try this again. <laughs> I may delete the first one, so we're just going to do the whole thing again. Um, so we are the Young at Heart, Adult at Heart book discussion. I am Jennifer Billingsley. I am uh, kind of your host. I have the account. We'll see if that changes later. The book we're doing this month, and by that I mean over the last six months, is Saving Red by Sonia Stones. So that is, this is the book. It is written in a verse and let's introduce ourselves again and let's start with Mylene this time because she picked the book and we'll do things out of order. Way to trip me up Jen, no I'm kidding. Hi my name is Mylene Jesus. I am a youth services librarian from the west coast which is unlike the rest of these ladies here. I picked this book um, solely for self reasons. Uh, I have met the author before. She's also the ver a very good friend of my coworker who has a thank, a thank you on the back of the book. And it literally takes place like my work. The library is mentioned once also. Woot! And so I'm excited to talk about it today. Uh, this is why I don't mute when it's like, who talks? Okay. Um, all right. So I'm Kim. I am a We've gone from children and teen librarian to youth services librarian at a bangin', well, I guess we'll call it bangin', at like a big multi-branch beast of a library system um, in Connecticut. And I work at a branch, which is lovely because we're kind of a library of our own, but we're also redheaded stepchildren. Children, so there's that too and a bookmobile which means like I'm not just a redheaded stepchild it's like you're the redheaded middle child let's just like forget it like deal with your own life but the bookmobile's lovely and yay yeah it's so awesome. you're like little red riding hood going off into the forest all the time hoping we don't get eaten along like the way and by eaten I mean <laughs> hoping that one of my drivers doesn't like crash us <laughs> terrifying there are days where I'm like, I'm gonna die today. Here's the day. <laughs> All right, I'm Crystal, and you can hear me now, right? Yes. Yay! Okay, uh, I'm Crystal. I'm a teacher. Um, I'm also from, uh, I also work in a small town in Connecticut. Um, I'm a high school social studies teacher. I teach 10th grade um, world history. And I'm Jennifer. I was Midwest, in the Midwest, and now I am on the East Coast again. I am in Connecticut. I am the head of a children's services department, and the fancy title is Youth and Family Learning. The director of Youth and Family Learning. It's very, it's a very fancy title, and it's the middle of summer reading, so it does not feel like a very fancy job at the moment, <laughs> but it's working. Um, yeah, so... I am excited to also talk about this book. Um, I don't know if we need to read the if, Marlene, if you want to read the blurb again, I'll delete the other one. So we, one we had a false start. Too. I'm, I'm having a hard time reading poetry or, or stuff in verse. If anyone else wants to read it, go for it I, too. I will, I will read it if you would like me to. Okay, like, I don't even have it. I got it. Okay. <laughs> My name is Molly. This book is about me. I'm probably the guiltiest person who ever lived. But I'm not ready to talk about that yet. I may never be ready. This book's about Pixel, too, my almost human dog, and about Cristo, my future, my possible future boyfriend. Mostly, though, it's about Red, this homeless girl I met in the park one night. She's a few years older than me, reckless and wild, and more fun than anyone. But if Red survived on the streets these last few months, it's only been because of dumb, dumb luck. It's hard to read this. And that luck might run out any second now. That's why I've made it my mission to get her back to her family, though it's hard to save someone when they don't really want to be saved. So, Saving Red. The book title is very accurate. I feel like the blurb, <laughs> the blurb is you, you're like exactly, you know what you're getting into, which is a book in verse, which is admittedly not my favorite. I didn't know that. So thank you for being uh, willing. <laughs> no. And I think it's a good, it's a good, it's a good book to have read. I feel like it's, I, I <laughs> thought that, no, I, and it's cool that it's set, it's set in California, it's set in California. It's, it's nice that it's like set kind of in your neighborhood. I think that that was an interesting piece of it. 
So. There's one point where she's describing riding her bicycle past Fourth in California, and I know exactly where that is. I, I mean, it's like two blocks away from where I work. I was just like, okay, I see people driving riding the bikes all the time. Any girl who's 15 years old, who's the main character's age, could have been this girl. And as far as um, the uh, other, I guess, I guess I don't want to call her a protagonist, but um, Red as a character, she's definitely here. I mean, I see any character, any any various numbers of people on a daily basis that could be read, <sighs> for better or worse. So I did a little bit of reading up on the author, and her first book is something. So it's it's a it's a it's an autobiographical book about her sister basically having a nervous breakdown, um, mm -hmm. and so I think that. While it wasn't my favorite that the author, oh, what is she doing? <laughs> yeah, no, my cat is stealing the show. That is my cat. She did not read this book. <laughs> so, um, so, uh, but I feel like, so I know that her first work really centered on her experience with her sister going through it. Cause it's about like, even the title is like my sister, something or other. I can't remember exactly what it is, but um, this, the same thing, happens for this and it was really interesting to kind of contrast it with the challenger deep is it that was the one that we read where it was like very first person from the person mm -hmm. um yeah. from the perspective of the young man kind of like spiraling downward and like his bleed with reality and so it was i think those were this was kind of two cool perspectives on it and also because it was like two different like art mediums because having it be in verse mm -hmm. versus um all of like the art from that i thought that was kind of that was kind of interesting. I also mostly listened to it as an audiobook, and the audiobook narrator was really good. Um, Molly was a little whiny for me, but she's also like a pre, she's like a, t a young teen girl. And sometimes I feel like I'm really hard on those protagonists because I did not like myself when I was that age. <laughs> And so you have to be very sparkly and spectacular for me to like really engage with you. I'm trying to like not hate Sansa Stark is really what I'm going at right now. Like how everybody was really anti Sansa in the beginning of Game of Thrones. Um, and that's how I feel like I do that a lot with young teenage girl characters that aren't like super strong. So. Can I like jump in though? So I mean, I'm all about the uh, like super strong, independent, super sassy, like teen girl, because that's like what I tried really hard to accomplish in high school and like fell flat, but like I gave it my all, like I really tried. But I think I kind of liked that. I, I'm, I'm backtracking to like the review I wrote, like right after I read this, which is kind of always helping me stay in the game. And um, I think, or at least at the time that I wrote this, I liked that she was kind of, average girl you know like she was just she's like hi i'm molly here's my dog um you know like she wasn't like super clumsy and yet you know gracious when like when she needed to be and she wasn't like what else did i write like i literally wrote some things oh and i wrote that um she wasn't like super beautiful but like didn't feel pretty enough you know like all that uh because i've decided that we're just going to be able to swear in this one uh, cause it's, <laughs> it gets a little obnoxious. You're like, stop pretending like you're not fucking gorgeous. Like we all have the same picture in our heads. Get over yourself. Uh, you've got boys raining from the roof for you. Like I'm tired of your shit. Um, and she was like, just like a chick. She's like, I'm just hanging out, trying to get my volunteer hours done at the last minute, like all 15 year olds. So I did, I did have an appreciation for that. Although, like, if I had to pick, I would rather have a teenage girl who's, like, kicking ass and taking names. But, like, I did appreciate that she wasn't, like, Bella Swan or some other crap. So. Um, it also was a good reminder that there's, while I enjoy reading YA, um, there are, and I, I'm sure I have not read as much YA as any of you ladies have, um, but there are things about the genre that I think are true of the genre uh, with books like these that I, you can correct me if I'm wrong. Like I could have done without the entire love story part of this. Um, it, to me, I'm like, I think I thought that the parts that were more interesting were the, the family dynamics. And I thought it was more interesting, her relationship with red and what that brought out in her. And I probably could have done without the whole 
love story part, but I understand where the love story part then softens um, the narrative and it's going to, and it's going to keep a actual 15 year old reading this book or an actual 13 year old or 12 year old or whatever. Like they're really going to dig that. So I can understand where me, I'm like, eh, I don't need that teenage love story bullshit. Like, I don't need that. I'm like, just give me more of this other stuff. But um, so I feel like it's kind of, kind of similar, like kind of jumping off of what you said, Kim. Um, and in that way, that really made her like this teenage girl. It's like, oh, I'm going to try and save this homeless person, but also find love. And I'm like, eh, enough with the love. I was actually, I saw right through that thinking, they needed the Crystal character because otherwise the part about her having somewhere to stay and then having like, um, you know, like uh, the dog having another friend as well. Like they needed that as part of the, 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 the pieces in the story. So like he wasn't necessarily important, but the physical location of his house was. So I was like, okay, I can, I can get beyond. And like the absence his... of, of a parent adult figure yeah. at that location. Like it was very like plot specific. At least that's what I thought too. So can we let's so let's play off let's play off of these two things now. So let's play off of now. See, I I am a horrible human being. I was not mad at that romance, but I think I wasn't mad at it. <laughs> Laugh, Crystal. I think I wasn't mad at it because it was so tame and fine like you know like it's when it's like your eyes meet across the hallway and you just fall in love by third period i'm like fuck you and the horse you rode in on like like that kind of crap but they like i just i am i've moved on <laughs> uh, i actually recently read a book where they did make eye contact and then there were like vampires and i was like we've crossed lines um but <laughs> true story guys um but theirs were so tame and so PG. Like, I think, I'm like, this is exactly what it's like. Like, I've watched this thing happen in the library before. Like, a boy and a girl, like, sitting kind of close to each other and maybe scooching a little closer. Like, it's freaking cute. Like, I was like, that, okay. I was like, all right, fine. Like, this can be here. They didn't, like, they didn't, like, have sex on the 60th page. I was like, all right, fine. But you just mentioned the parents. Someone mentioned parents. Can we talk about that for a minute? I was, I really was distressed that her family situation wasn't better realized her mom was sitting on the couch smoking pot and I was like and when I, I wrote my review of it I was like why pot why not prescription meds like pot's not exactly what I would use if I was super depressed like why this do you have dramatic friends like where are they do you have a job who's making money like I just had all of these like all of these thoughts in regard to this home life and I'm like how do they have a roof like how how I need more here um and there was nothing like there there wasn't even like the illusion of it of, of an explanation it was just like she's got shit parents and her mom smells pot and and really sad. and i would argue and i i could be wrong but i would argue that that's also us approaching this book as adults we're like where are the grown-ups like and it, it's not for all intents and purposes it's not written for us and so i don't know i think i'd be curious to ask you know, a 13-year-old or 15-year-old or a young person that read this book, if they even noticed or cared what was going on with the, or not going on as the case may be, with with the parents. And that's where I think that um, I also would have liked that explored a little bit more and explained a little bit more and would, would be a, a book or a, a chapter or a section I would be interested to read. My comment to that, I mean, I agree with you. Like, it was very obvious that the parents were not, or uh, grownups in general, were not anywhere in the vicinity of present. But I, I also thought that was like a 21st century latchkey latch kid experience. Like, nowadays, your parents could literally be in the room with you and they're, you're still, like, alone. So, in this case, I, th I think the money was made to, to uh, going on Kim's, Kim's point, um, the dad was always working. I was, I was hoping and praying that it wasn't going to go off into like, and then the secretary wanted a divorce or something. Like, you know what I mean? Like that, that, that storyline. So I thought, thankfully that didn't happen. Sorry. Spoiler. The dad is not having an affair. He's just absent. Um, and the mom with a pot, well, California, <laughs> if we were a different part of California, I mean, if it's, if it's Santa Monica, if we were a different part of California, it could probably be meth, but we're not. 
pot is much more readily available and they have such an awesome strain that like it really does just calm your depression or give you a better mood you know so she's still physically present <laughs> sorry <laughs> i love i love that inside <laughs> like i don't know it's just amazing that they're saying like no guys if it was like four counties down they'd be smoking meth but like <laughs> here here's the spot that's my favorite thing yeah i get i i'm that was lovely. Thank you. Um, I, I mean, get it, but okay, okay. So I was recently like re-listening to our Denton Little thing. I don't know why. I just like clicked. I was like, wait, this is me talk about Denton Little. Mm-hmm. And like, even though the parents, well, even though the parents were kind of like not fully present, there were like, wh- there was a, there's like a reason. Like when books, when there are books and like, pa- they're like, my parents are off skiing and the Alps. You're like, okay. And you just sort of go with it. There was like, I mean, I guess maybe there was. I was just really concerned with, like, why are you smoking pot for your depression? It should be prescription meds. But that's a very New England way to think of things. It, so. it is. It's a very it's a very um, non, non-medicinal uh, marijuana state. We're just like, why is she not taking lots of Prozac? Like, why? That's what all the moms did. <laughs> like, but that's what all my teen's moms did. Not just, I'm not going to speak of anybody's specific moms. But, like, yeah, you're just, yeah. Or, like, or why is it not drinking was my question. Is like, is, like, oh, that would be, like, a self-medicating parent in the North. I feel like um but yeah no that's that's super interesting but that's I mean she's she's like a local author who's like writing about local local stuff so that that's cool that it fits actually that's that's good to know on any given day I don't I'm not sure if I'm smelling um patchouli or like a strain of marijuana or like just someone's hair product like I'm just like okay and then anyone who walks in is like, okay, you're a boho. Are you boho because you really are boho? Or it's like, oh, it's a fashion trend today. It's like, okay. So all the stuff that was in this book, I was like, this is literally every day. Like, at least very relevant every day. I could imagine anyone walking across the street, like, actually, I've seen this, um, kind of with a haze about them. And it wasn't drugs. It was, they actually spray themselves with spray, spray paint. So, like, any of these things are totally nor- normal to me now. Marijuana, totally like the least offensive of all the drugs. You're just like, did is this your like no poo shampoo? Like, is is it skunk smelling? Yeah. Is it like what are we are we really stoned? What's happening right now? That's amazing. It could be any of those things. It, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> did um, I, don't, I? I don't ask anymore. Good. I mean, I, I feel like that's the only way to keep your sanity sometimes is to just stop asking the questions. <laughs> For like public service desk, you're like, this is this is just let it wash over you and move forward. I'm sure um, my face doesn't lie, but I never vocalize. I'm just like, oh, and then, okay. <laughs> anyway, sorry, um, I need to sideline that. No, no, it's whatever. We are so very loosely um, organized. I'd say you're fine. This is what we've always been like. I know it's been like six plus months, but like this is totally normal, I'd say. Um, aside from the scary demon monster who was talking to us through the speakers earlier that was a new a new thing i may just leave that up because because we might friends when one of us dies (laughs) no um the but yeah so my favorite character so i i agree that like the the parents not being present bothered me as an adult i also thought it was like really tidily wrapped up at the end like it was I appreciated that they didn't sidetrack her storyline with like there being an extramarital affair or anything. Like I liked that it was just like, they just needed to get their shit together um, and pay more attention and that they acknowledged that and apologized. I thought that was really good, but it was also like really tidy. Like, even though it was like professing itself to not be like, Oh, everything didn't turn out awesome. And it's like, yeah, but your parents like acknowledged that they hurt you and decided to do better. And then like super spoiler alert, don't, just turn it off if you haven't read the book. And then her like her brother like texts at the end. I was like, well, that's extremely so tiny. Mad. I was damn furious. That's literally odd to say about it, but I was damn pissed if that it happened because I thought it just kind of ruined it. I don't want to say ruined everything. Those are very strong words, but I liked that it wasn't on the and tidy with red. Like I was like, cool. And then she got that damn t- I was like, oh hell. I was pissed. Right. Is she setting up, does she have another book or an, is, she, is there a plan for another book? Do you know that at all, Mylene? 
Um, I don't know that, and I should have looked up, looked into it, but I don't know. I could find out very easily. I didn't see it. It didn't have the parentheses uh, yeah. next to it that indicates the second book in a series is it even announced. Because, like, remember when we did Denton Little's death date? We were like, shocking revelation. <laughs> like, point one. Like, well, who are you? Where is the second book coming from? Um, because that's what that ending felt like to me. Is like, okay, and now here we are, and we're going to set up whatever the next or an ending like that feels that way. Like we're setting up whatever the next installment is. And so to end it there, like very much felt like, and read the next book to find out more. Like, where, where has he been? What has been going on? Like, that's what that felt like to me. I think that, um, no, go. Oh, no, no, no. I was gonna say, no offense to Sonia, but I hope there isn't another one just because uh, it, it because it's so neatly wrapped up at the end, I feel like, you know, if a kid is interested in a story that's maybe local in my case, or just uh, talking about how something terrible, terrible, terrible has been like ruined their life for a year, this could be the happy ending as simple as it is for someone. It doesn't have to be like, okay, now let's go back into more drama. Like we have so few books out there that I can give to a 12 year old going, it's a little bit rough, but it's, it'll get not so rough at some point and then you'll have to see what happens at the end i'd rather have that than find out what happened to her ptsd brother oh sorry total, total spoiler no um, we already talked about that because i talked about him Kyle. we're fine spoilers i will put that in the bottom oh, i'll be like don't read this don't listen don't watch this if you haven't read the book um we should just start putting that as a disclaimer on all of our things um that and the cussing um, at, at some point I may disappear because my cat is literally like popping up and tapping me to get my attention and I feel like she might need to be fed so um, I may disappear um, and okay. you, you may either see me walking in the background or I may try to figure out how to turn off my camera so just as a forewarning um, okay. so speaking of animals um, the dog, favorite character? favorite character? <laughs> like are we like all on board? what is his name? his name is Pixel and Pixel. I I love him, and I want a dog, <laughs> so this is difficult to read, not having a dog, um, but yeah, I think I, I liked, I liked, I liked how thoroughly she has projected a personality and, like, a voice onto the pupper. I think that that was, like, very realistic for, like, an animal loving, like, this is your companion and your bud. Um, yeah. I really liked that about... I really um, liked that about the story. And now I read this in December, so you can correct me if I'm wrong, but the, the dog goes missing, for, like Pixel's missing for a while. And mm -hmm. I just remember that being like the worst fucking section of the entire book where I was like, oh no, like a lot of shit can go down, but like this dog needs to come back now like <laughs> I, and I think it's exactly that Jen I think it's because I mean one like as a dog owner myself and anybody that follows any of my social media knows that it's like it's just like me my husband and my dog and like that's that's my deal um but I think that having a dog and also the fact that really I felt like I knew this dog <laughs> like of all of the characters I'm like mm-mm Mm -mm. I cannot handle this if this dog does not come back. Can't handle it. That was definitely a concern. So there's a website. Um, I don't remember exactly what the address is, but it's like does the dog die.com and it's just people crowdsourcing like and let, letting in there's like an icon and you can like basically search any movie and like find out if you need to not watch this movie because the dog dies. Um I'll see Brilliant. if I can find it and I'll throw I'll throw the link up in the summary if I think of it as well. It's very it's very helpful um as far as from like a self-care <laughs> point of view. Right. Yes. I'm literally looking. Um but in it in addition to um the dog as uh oh no, don't go to does the dog die.com. The first thing that came up is the Babadook. I'm lost. Um <laughs> I don't know. I'm lost. Um it's the wrong website. Um, so as Jen Hunt, um, but I think that was also an interesting look into what the mind of, um, not just any dog, but a therapy dog is like, also like what, like what might the inner workings of a therapy dog be? Because, um, that's what that dog was trained to be. If I'm not mistaken, he was a therapy dog for her brother. And then when her brother, like, mm -hmm. you know, who do you need? Then she 
got and needed the dog. Um, so I thought like he wasn't just like man's best friend, but he was like on a mission, like with a mission, which I thought was really fascinating. Um, but I, but I will have to say, I think, yeah, so I was, I was really attached to this dog. Like I, I cared a lot more about this dog, I think than most things. And I think what got me about like what sort of like started Molly off to a bad start with me. And I actually, I, I had to reread my review to realize this, but I actually put the book down for two days and I was like, forget this is, um, it just, it really gets to me <clears throat> when the author uses suspense to like forcibly hold on to you. So, you know, if I'm like Molly was saying stuff like, like, something happened, but I'm not going to tell you what it is. Like verbatim. Like she was like, yeah. but I'm not going to tell you. Or like, now's not the time to get into it. And I'm like, if you just, can you just, I was doing good until you had to bring that up. And it just like, it ha like it just, she kept saying over and over and over, like, I can't talk about it. I'm not going to talk about it. I'm not going to tell you yet. You guys aren't ready. Um, and it was so freaking frustrating. And I was like, I'm not even sure if I care what happened to you anymore. Like, I'm not even sure if it, I, I'm i going to blink twice um, just because it was so, it, it felt like, like the, she, the author, who I'm sure is a very nice person, um, was trying to like hold me by force. And I'm like, you don't need, you don't need to tie me to the chair. Like you don't, you don't need to do all that. I'll read your book. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you don't have to hold a gun to my head, you know, of this, of the cloud of this mystery. Like that's, please don't just like tell your freaking story and, and let's get there. So Crispin, Crispin, Christo, he was cool, but I, I was like, Christo, like Greece. And I couldn't let that go. And so there was all that was left was a dog. <laughs> Don't laugh at me. Did um, the, the oh, that point, of, point of clarification, Kim, that's Crisco. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. And it is, it is Christo, C-R-I-S-T-O is our love interest in this book. Christo, Crisco, it's all grease on it. <laughs> so um, he... I definitely think that um, it felt that part actually felt very teenage girl to me where she was like, but I can't like, but we're not talking about this right now with the teasing, like where she was. But I think that the, the structure of it didn't really didn't really play because I since it was in. I actually had a much easier time once I was just listening to it because then it was kind of like her inner monologue and her not being able to deal with it. But when I was reading it as verse, I was just like, who are you writing to? Like, are you, is this like a burn book? Like what is, what's going on here? Like, what, what are you, are you like journaling? Like, but there was like no reason for the recording. And so there was no reason for us her to acknowledge us as being, as her being a narrator. And so I was confused by that. So, and it like pulled me, that pulled me out sometimes. And I don't know, again, I don't know if that's me reading this as an adult and looking too deeply into it, but I think it also, yeah, that constant, I don't like, think I'm not it gonna... is this as an adult. I don't think it is this as an adult. Look, I'm, ba I'm basically an old 16 year old. Like it's the, all the things that I do, it's like, I just got my license and like, no, I, I really think it, you're right. I think it was the structure of the story. It, because it felt like, I, I know it was supposed to be Molly talking to us, but it felt like, the off like it felt like like delivering a really long monologue and like with no like breaking the fourth wall you know like it felt like i'm this person and i'm gonna tell you the story of my life and my life is this and this and this but i'm not gonna tell you this part y'all gotta wait um and it just felt annoying i don't know i was patronized i felt patronized i mean i i agree that the suspense portion was maybe a little too long drawn out um having her do it like once or twice or just like a couple times to make you really understand hey she's not comfortable with this particular topic would it would have been enough but it was almost like and sorry if i if i'm gonna kill for everybody i um oh god oh now i'm blanking on it the the story that everyone anyway hopefully we can edit this out later um where the girl inevitably gets raped that one and she, the whole t the whole story she, not not this story but like the the story itself is she can't talk about her having gotten raped and so the whole story is her not talking about having gotten raped. It was really. Do you remember which one it was? Anyone? Anyone? Crystal, is, just is it speak? Is it speak? Yes. Lori Hall Anderson. Yes. 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 Okay. Mm -hmm. Very important as far as like uh, having a conversation about it, but the same type of um mechanism. I felt like okay, I get it. I, I understand you don't want to talk about it but then don't talk about it. Don't talk about not talking about it. 
that's how I felt about it. I was like, okay, I get it. I can I can walk away from that, but don't lend itself to like us wanting to know. And then you just go, oh, I, I, I can't. Because it doesn't make her seem less traumatized. It just makes her seem like, yeah, annoying as a teenager. It, it, makes, it makes it feel like she wants you to want to know was what it felt. And you're right. Speak did it. Speak did it in a really interesting way. But this way, it was like, I want to tell you, but I'm not going to tell you because I know you want to know was what it felt like. Um, and I'm wondering if that would have played better if it had been more explicitly her journal. Like if we had known mm -hmm. that it was her journal and she had essentially, I, I think that it would have, I don't think it would have been as jarring. And I didn't, this is not necessarily something that I picked up on. I didn't, I don't necessarily share that opinion. I don't remember being put off by that. Um, but I, I think that if I could hypothesize, right, that if we, if it was upfront that the structure was a journal and the way that she was writing was, I'm, I'm not ready to write about that. Like maybe tomorrow will be the day or something, something that acknowledged that this is her I mean, inner I mean, struggle. That writing that about this would have cleared it up for me, me, me like immediately. I would have been like, I'm not ready to write about this yet. Would have totally, I would have been like, this is a journal. Like, and I don't know. Yeah, I think. What, was it a journal or are we just now on to? Oh, I don't, I don't know whether or not it was, but I'm saying I think that maybe you w it, it would have been easier to digest that suspense piece and like not being able to process all of this if you're like, oh, yeah, this is very clearly the thoughts of a teenager that are being, you know, put into her private journal and yet that might have made it a little bit more palatable as opposed to just like feeling annoying. And again, I didn't share that feeling, but like I, I could see that being you know, an, an easy way to remedy that. I agree. I, I agree whole, wholeheartedly. Yeah. If it was, if the story, can, and see, it, I think it also depends on the way you read it. So like if the story, if you read the story as her talking to her self, like if you the story as if like we're in her brain and, and we're just sort of observers to her, her life, then, then maybe it wouldn't have been so frustrating. But just some, for some reason, and I like books in verse. And I think maybe a lot of them do easily depict the fact that we're bystanders watching them live their lives. But for some reason, this one felt like someone on a stage talking to me, like David Sedaris giving me a show, like a not funny show. Um, and I don't know why. I don't know. Mylene, you're looking at the book. Maybe you can help me figure it out. Yeah. But for, for, to me, it just felt like, like, this person telling me a story, but like wouldn't tell me the whole thing. Like you I think, came over here and tell me, then tell me. Is it, I mean, I know that uh, in the blurb in the front, it definitely says in this book is about me. And then the very, I think maybe it's like that performance aspect of it becomes, because I feel, I feel like actually like read, listen, listening to the audiobook and hearing it in um, a young seeming voice, actually it really does kind of work as a performance piece too it sounds like like it sounds like spoken word poetry and just like the very on the very very last page the fact that it, it does that it does this countdown at the top at the top um and then it, it's talking in the first person at the very end of it um when again spoiler that it's the and that's when my phone buzzes i pull it out from my pocket expecting to see a text from christo but it's not from christo it's from noah noah like it's like like it's written, it's written like dialogue, not necessarily like, like it's written, or it's written like poetry that's meant to be performed, not read. Do you know like how like Shakespeare is difficult yeah. sometimes? Does it, if that makes sense? It does. It does. It's also been a really long time. So I don't, I barely remember. I, I do that's remember a really that good point. feeling, but I don't remember why. I'm going to have to see if I can listen to this now because I usually listen to our books on audio and that gives me a whole different perspective on it. But this is one of the ones that I was like, oh, it's a book in verse. I can read this. I can do it. Um, I can't read more than the words. I'm just saying I'm a little lazy. Um, <laughs> but, but because I had to read it on my own and like hear her own voice in my head, I was thinking, it's, it's like my own journal, but like I'm not interesting at all. Or, you know what I mean? Not that I'm not interested. Ah! More, more like a... 
okay, this thought was a thought I should inner monologue. This thought was a me telling you what's going on. So like, yeah, the performance aspect of it would change it for me too. Interesting. Okay. Do you, um, so I, I actually, I really appreciated that in the actual book, she has all of those links to like mental health services. And she talks about like the inspiration for her, um, I think it's so okay so the first so first of all the the book that she wrote about her sister was her like big one and it's um it's called stop pretending what happened when my big sister went crazy and so I read like, that book as did you really I what? did as a teenager the book's like like yay thin and that's what I, I wrote in my review that I like the author's notes but I couldn't remember why I read that book and I huh? love that book as a See, and that one, I guess that one was autobiographical. It's really, it's kind of like really heavily based off of her experiences with her um, when her sister had a nervous breakdown. And um, since it's so, and since that one is obviously told from an autobiographical perspective, um, but I was kind of, it was weird that um, the, the very specific, no, I better not, no, I better not repetition of Red was based off of an actual homeless person that Sonia like like ran into and gave stuff so I think like I, and I get that authors are inspired by like a variety of specific events but I was thinking about how weird um so my grandmother when she was um at like the tail end of Alzheimer's and a head injury and all sorts of stuff um would say um no honey all the time like that was her that she would re she would repeat that almost like she was saying other words and so she would inflect it differently but it was that over and over and over again and i was just thinking about how if somebody used that phrase and pulled it into fiction i would just be like yeah about it and it, i just felt super weird about the fact that she and i like and again like you like as a writer or an artist like you are inspired by real life but it was just like the fact that that specific that specific repetition was um was from a real, a real person i was like ah eh. like i don't know how i feel about this <laughs> Um, How did you feel about it before you got to that part? Before you found out that it was based off of that that the character or that that statement that Red made was based off of the statement of the real person? I think that I um, the character of Red in a lot of ways felt really so. So sometimes she felt very real, and sometimes she felt like a prop for Molly because it was Molly's story. It was Molly who was. Molly, who was striving and whose family relationship was changed by this. Um, but, and I also, I, and it ended up being positive how Molly was like reaching out to this family and that it was like, it ended up being good because it got her back to having help and having a hospital, like having, being hospitalized. But, um, which she obviously needed because she was a danger to herself. But I also was just, the fact that her she was so focused as a character on getting this family back together because of her own family felt very real as a teenager but um i was also just like what kind of like you are a teenager and this person has has removed herself from this family situation for a specific reason it just felt very like like she was obviously trying to exert control in whatever way she was able to. And she's a teenager. And so, you know what I mean, like I had to like kind of forgive her for that, but I was like, please don't try and reach out to her parents without her knowing, like, can you not? Cause you don't, do you know what I mean? Like you don't like, if you, if you do something like that, it's one thing to like reach out to an external source and try and get assistance for someone. But I think it's a completely different thing to reach out to someone's family and try and put them back in touch with it because you have no idea what their actual family situation is like. And so if she was, if she was on the run from an abuser or from um, just like from any kind of dangerous home situation, I was just like, every time like that would happen, I'd be like, eh, eh. like it just made me like, it made me anxious in a way that I think the book was not intending to make me anxious. So that was not quite talking about the question you asked me, but like that's how I felt about red. No, no, that's that's okay because I I kind of feel like maybe we were supposed to feel a little anxious. Like I because I mean I mean especially like if if this was maybe a twelve year old trying to do this, you know, like an eleven or twelve year old, I can understand how 
this thought, how the thought process of maybe they left because they needed to leave wouldn't cross the mind some years younger. But by the time they hit, I don't think, but by the time they hit, um, like 15, 15, like that's the prime time, especially because like Molly's home life is such a mess where I think she should have been thinking of that, but she was so focused on her own stuff. I feel like we as the readers, we're, we're supposed to feel a little terrified of what Red's home life would be like. And I don't know about you guys, but when when Molly finally got Red's mom on the phone and they had their conversation on the phone, like this huge weight had been lifted up because I was like, oh, at least her home isn't horrible. You know, like it's really just that this character is struggling with a mental illness and like this is the result of what has happened based off that struggle. Um, you know, it's not that she's running from that phone conversation. I mean, like, we don't know, but we, you know, what we're given from that phone conversation. Like she had a good mom who was like really concerned, but if I'm not mistaken, Red was over 18 and could make her own decisions. And this mom had other children and Red was doing some scary shit. Um, so, I mean, it's super sad, but I'm, and I'm not a mom, but like, I can understand how, you know, this mom had to be like, well, I've got these kids who are not adults that depend on me to keep them safe. And it's as good as it's going to get. But like that, that like feeling of relief when you finally realize what kind of person the mom was, like, I wonder if that was intentional. Like if, if we were supposed to be a little squiffed out up until that point, um, which is why I don't know, maybe that, that short and simple conversation gave us so much information about Red's own life. It was very small, but very important. That's just, I don't know, it's just a thought. My privilege is super showing because I didn't really think about that at all. And like hearing, hearing that, con I think it's because what I bring from myself into it is like, but of course there are going to be loving parents at home. Like certainly this girl has loving parents. Um, and I think that, you know, it just pulls from my own experience because um, while Lord knows, even in the affluent district that I work in, there are certainly situations where um, home life is not great. And there are kids that um, are in, are in, fairly desperate situations. I'm not encountering it as much as I would maybe working in an, an urban, a more urban setting. And it's certainly not something, and I'm, I'm thankful, it's certainly not something that I can connect with in my own personal life. So, and granted, it has been a long time since I read it, but I can't say as you're talking about all this and as, as we're kind of going through all, this whole narrative, I, I didn't really think about that in terms of what Red's home life could be and why it would be a bad thing for her or could potentially be a bad thing if she was running from a, an abuser or whatever the case may be. I didn't, that's not something that crossed my mind. I think that coupled with the fact that I, I did want a happy ending for that character too, you know, so there was, there were those things, but I, um, it's just not something that I really thought about. I think that the, um, I think it's really interesting because so what I've worked in a couple of different places and just speaking, just speaking as, as a kid who was raised in a, in, in a very affluent area and then a, a person who's worked in affluent areas and then also in less affluent areas, the abuse still happens in affluent areas. It's just money covers up everything. Do you know what I mean? Like that's really kind of like, you just like you have better medical attention. You have highly educated abusers that know how to hide things. Like I think it just it's still totally, it still totally totally happens. But you usually don't talk about it, and the kids don't. Those kids have to survive into adulthood to get their stories, and so you don't hear about that from those kids because they know to be quiet. And I feel like it's like a really, that's kind of that's where I was worried about Red. I was worried that she would have somebody in in power who would be coming for her, which I think is a very, that's so sad. It's a very, like, it's not a good, um, but that, that was kind of my thing is, is that she would have like external forces and this would be another external force. Like, it, and, and then maybe, again, maybe it was that catchphrase that no better not, but because it was like that weird self-restraint that I didn't know where it was coming from. Um, maybe that's where that came from. But yeah, I think it's, 
it's like a she was like it was I think it was a really it was a really interested interesting book and I'm glad that I I'm glad that I read it and that I listened to it but I don't um I don't know who I I don't know who I would recommend this to because I don't have the local I, I think I would recommend it to like a middle a middle grade like I'm an upper middle grade teenager like I don't think much younger than like ninth grade I don't think I would eighth or ninth grade I would go for this um even though she's pretty young um I don't know I just don't know who I would try and put this I guess it would depend if they asked if they asked me for like a read alike for like uh speak or something this would be a good a good one or anything anything else that was like super like heightened dramatic and in verse this would be a good one for so that's not true i don't i but i don't know if this would be the first book that i would come to without a read alike behind it um because it's a weird kind of genre for me just if that makes sense i, know, I think I, it's I totally mix. understand yeah i i Characters, I think she was 15, which puts her in like the ninth grade. I think, in fact, I think I started college at four or high, high school at 14, but like you were 15. Are you in 10th grade? I think, yeah, I graduated high school. At college 17. at 14. Are you Dookie Hauser, Kim? What the <laughs> <heck>? <laughs> I'm that kid from Smart Guy, Disney Channel. My college students are college. like 15, 16. Like a lot of my students in at some point in their sophomore year get like their learner's permit. Um, yeah. So, so 15 is, is sophomores, like maybe some freshmen, but mostly sophomores. Right. So see, and like, there was something about this book. So she, maybe a couple months before I read this book, I read this other book that I had to read um, called Stolen. I don't know if any of you ever read it. it. It's like, it looks like the most boring book in the world. Like the cover's black and there's like a butterfly on the cover. And I was like, I'm not reading this crap. But I, then I reached a point where I had to read it and I read it. And I think the format of, and I think part of what makes this this story hard to recommend, I'm not even sure if it's the content of the story. I think it's the, something about the layout, something about the way that it was written, like, just did, like, di didn't quite compare it to Stolen, which would be the books that I would recommend, like, if I somehow wound up down a competition path where someone wanted a book about someone who had some sort of mental something to deal with. Stolen is written, so like the book is about a girl who, who gets kidnapped in an airport, like legit, like in an airport, I wanna say in like France and wakes up in Australia in like a cabin in the desert and it's like, fuck! Um, and so like that's basically what she like, in, and you're like, how the fuck did she even get here with some man? And this man kidnapped her in an airport in like, in, like France. And so, um, but, but anyway, so, the, but the way that the story is written and it takes you a little bit to catch on. So you do have a little bit of that, like, I, confusion is the right word, but you do have a little bit of that, like, what am I reading that you also got from Saving Red, but you quickly enough pick up on the fact that she's writing him a letter. So the whole book is her reliving. She ultimately winds up with, um, Munchausen's? Is that the one where you fall for the person who kidnapped you? No, Munchausen's is where you swallow things. Stockholm Syndrome. Stockholm! Stockholm! <laughs> Sorry! <laughs> I get my diseases mixed up. I want too much, like, untold stories of the ER where this stuff is happening. So she, <laughs> so she winds up ultimately... Stop laughing, Jen. She winds up ultimately with Stockholm. Um, so, and, and it, it's like banana. The way it happens is so quick. You're like, what? Um, but... But there's something about the format of that whole thing that works. And I feel like that's what Saving Red tried to do. But like something, like it just just didn't quite. And if anyone's ever bored and decides to read that book, like I would love to revisit that theory that I have that I'm not sure if it's true, but I think it's true. Um, because, you know, like we were talking about how Saving Red is kind of like, is it in her own head? Is it kind of like a performance piece? Like, you know, is it is it better to is it better to be listened to than read, whatever. But um, in Stolen, like she, you know, like you, you kind of have that for a minute too. You're like, how is she? She's saying you. What is this? What what tense is this in? Like I spent a lot of time. Like what tense is this? Um, only to realize she's literally saying you did this, and when you did that, you 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 you, um, which 
was weird, but then like, then once you're reading it, you couldn't imagine it being written any other way. And like, just, it just didn't get here. Oh, some, there's some illness where you swallow things. I think, and that much has there's an untold story to the ER. I didn't, it's real. So I'm to stay in the hospital. All right, I'm done. Just, I'm done. Moving on. But that, that was my, that was my thought. <laughs> best, best mix up for Stockholm syndrome ever. <laughs> So that was great, Kim. That was comedy gold. Thank you for that. Um, I would I would be interested in reading that book at some point. I think that the see and I again like I don't know what my deal is. Is, is if it's like a if it's I don't I haven't talked to a lot of kids that are really into verse um, verse novels, but I know that there's an audience for them. I know that people are super into them. So, um, but yeah, this would be a good one for kind of a realistic fiction uh, about like a tween girl or teen. She is teen. She just, she read is really young to me, I think. Um, I think, I think that it's a compelling enough story and I think it moves quickly enough that I would recommend this to a reluctant reader. Um, and that's what I think a lot about novels in verse because it's less intimidating. There are less words on the page, and I think this one—I don't know—I I didn't feel I didn't feel like I needed to fill in the gaps a lot. I thought it there was a lot of fluency to it. Like I I understood everything that was happening without having to to put a lot of additional pieces in. I I felt, and I mean that could also be me again, reading as an adult and reading as a reader and reading as someone that has an active imagination. But I immediately think of, when I think of different books in verse, I think about kids that are like, oh, reading. Because I think it's a lot less intimidating um, if it's something that they can really digest and they can really move through quickly. Um, and so that's what I think about with, with this one. Val, you wanted to say hi to the girl? Hi, Valley. Oh. Kisses. Oh. I want one, please. <laughs> but I agree with you. I typed it, but I agree with you. Uh, this is probably a really good um, book for a reluctant reader who wants to read um, contemporary fiction. Yeah. And someone who likes like something along the lines of like not like what is it? What's the new Archie one? Riverdale like it's it's got that like heightened intense drama in like a very specific setting kind of a deal to it so I think that would work that's good I feel like I agree with uh, with Crystal in, in the sense that not only just a uh, realistic reader aspect but also um, it isn't quite as so two things it, it introduces the idea of um, mental illness if, uh, if that's a way to say it versus like Challenger Deep that we talked about that you just kind of go off the deep end as like quickly as possible um but also it talks about not a lot of not a lot of teen novels that I've read at least um have the element of a, a sibling who comes back from war or with any PTSD at all and then not a lot of them really talk about service animals in the way that this one does um so I think just a, in the introduction of it for a legend reader who may not have the the language to ask for that is, is kind of a good thing too. Again, because I'm more privy to this type of like environment and I do see kids who don't want to read, but like this could relate to them because it's Santa Monica. Um, I can also see how it, it could be difficult because it 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 is a very specific place um, with with very very specific types of people, but I don't think that it's so out there that like a, a kid way in rural anywhere wouldn't be able to relate to friends of theirs um, having something they couldn't talk about, you know? So the reluctant reader aspect of it, I think will draw them in and then the, the, the actual characters and the things that they can relate to will keep them there. Um, like, we uh, said, like we said before. And no, and that, and that sure. isolation where, and like where she like isn't talking to her friends anymore and cause they don't have anything in common and that she's, and I actually, I really, I really, really, my favorite part of the book was the fact that Red did not want to talk to her, that Red was like, not like that she was 
um, brought into the hospital and like refused to see her. I thought that that was like, and how Molly like had a tough time with it, but also was like, okay, cool. Like, yeah. like not cool because I miss you. But like, I thought that that was really um, gently and thoughtfully done. Like how that was in specific dealt with. I thought that that was, that was good. And I was really excited that the dog didn't die. Like that was, yeah. I was like, oh, thank goodness. Like, cause I don't think I would have yeah, been Yeah, give your live. puppy a, a kiss. And then, and also how it was like, how I was like, that and that was my other thing with with um, Molly as a as a character. I was like, I was like, this boy has clearly just lost his phone. Can you just give him like a minute? Um, <laughs> but I also completely yeah, get yeah, that. I had a small meltdown when that was happening. <laughs> but, I was like, that what happened? <laughs> I was I was not as upset with her, but I was like, shit, <laughs> like this poor girl's having a fucking meltdown. But I like the way it was resolved. Like, I like that it wasn't something dramatic. Like, he found some snow yeah. bunny or something. He's like, there was just no service. <laughs> I had no control. There was just no service. And she was like, oh, okay. I thought he didn't love me anymore. I don't know. But, like, it was I that little, like, that little, like, dash of Lifetime movie drama. <laughs> like, I was like, shit's about to get real. But then, like, it was lovely and fine. Sorry. I highlighted this page. Um, only, I mean, it's, it's super, it's super fast as far as uh, what it says, but like, it's, it, it's kind of close to the part where Crystal texts her back finally. But it's, a, it's the, the highlight is um, until today. It says until this very minute, actually, I was under the impression that when you forgive people, you did it to make them feel better. Now I see the work um, that this works the other way around. Forgiving people makes you feel better. I don't think a lot of kid stories have those words, so that like a kid will understand that yeah, it, it isn't about you making someone else feel better like this is what for, you know forgiving is something mental health wise is better for you so like just in those few like lines that's a lot and in this i mean it relates to the whole crystal thing because she can forgive him as quickly as possible because he's just like yeah this is what i fucked up and this is the thing but she could also be like yeah i should forgive myself for going off the deep end there shouldn't i <laughs> but who doesn't do that like i literally just did that re recently I had, a, I had a friend who didn't text me back after a day i was like <gasps> I watched a roommate do that. Like, I watched my roommates have a fucking melt. Well, not like a meltdown, like, but like, a, like a like a grown up version of that. It was like, I really liked him, and something, something. I don't know what happened. And I was like, maybe he's just like doing something. Like, maybe there's just a thing happening. And I kid you not, I think it was less than a day. Like, I think it was later that day. She got a text from him, and he'd been like in a plane, and like his phone was on airplane mode, and like, like I it's like see, he was literally just doing a thing but what i like about that hurtling, is that like hurtling through the atmosphere <laughs> yeah, hurtling through the sky <laughs> but i mean what that power. means is that you know the same agony that this 15 year old girl had i mean i know we like to think that like we're adults and we think adultly but like how adultly do we think i know that's why i keep saying i'm basically 16 like i this was like maybe two years ago that i watched this happen with someone who's in their late 20s um this stuff doesn't go away. Like, there's, n I don't think there's a, a hard line between teen and YA. Like the, like the hard lines might begin to form as life things happen to you, but I don't think they're necessarily age defined. And I mean, I swear to God, the more you talk about this book, the more I think this book is mad deep. Like, what was I thinking? Because like, <laughs> you're right. Like, that's a deep passage. Like, you apologize. And I haven't even figured that out yet. Like, I'm like, I'm mad at you. I'm not apologizing. or I'm not forgiving you because I'm still mad. Um, but then, but, like, j as you're reading that, I was like, dang, maybe I'd be less mad if I'd apologize for myself or forgive people for myself. But I, I also know that, fuck you, no. I'm still mad. I'm going to be mad, and that's <laughs> going to be fine with me. Um, <laughs> that's just the truth. I'm going to be mad. Um, but there is something to be said for at least knowing and having the knowledge that when you forgive someone, you're not doing it for them. You're doing it for you. Well, I think, and also the same, the same is true in, like, if we're going to get deep, we're going to get real deep. Um, I think, I think, I think that the same is true in reverse. Sometimes you ask for forgiveness for things so you can feel better. It's not really about the other person because sometimes, especially if it's like something they didn't know or like, like it's it's a part of your internal healing process and it has nothing to do with them you know what i mean like that's part of the isn't that that's one of like the 
um, sobriety things is going going and asking forgiveness and kind of acknowledging. I it's believe like a it's actually thing, making it? amends. It's one of the 12 steps. I believe it's like not just asking for it's actually it's making actually amends. amends. And I only and I say this, I could be making this could be all wrong. I was watching this episode of Criminal Minds. And the like lady and was alcoholic and she was trying to apologize for throwing somebody under the bus. And the lady's like, I've already said the apology and moved on. And the lady's like, apologies are just words. I'm trying to make amends. And I think she's like, I'll separate them. So like, it was just Criminal Minds. So I don't know. I don't know. It could just be good writing. It could be it not twelve step program. It could be good but, writing. Right, right. <laughs> like I don't know. Steps. Yep. Um, so there. the website is is does the dog die dot com, and the top trending one is the Babadook. And in, in case you were wondering, yes, the dog does die. So that's I just spoiler spoiler for the Babadook. So, but it's a very important website, and I think that for self care, people more people need to know about it. And yes, Hannah does know about it. So. <laughs> Um, yeah, no, it's very important. Um, oh, I guess it's important. Does anybody Sorry, have, have Does anybody have any final thoughts about the book? I, I Sorry, I was trying to unmute. You're good. Off. This meeting is bananas. Um, um, I, I admittedly I have not, not suggested the book to anybody, anybody yet, yet, but. But I think maybe I think after maybe having after talked having about, about it with you ladies, ladies, I would. I think I might. I think I might. Yeah. Um, Agreed. I didn't think I didn't think I think I will now. I will. Agreed. Yeah. yeah, I think I think I think like talking this through definitely helped me. It's good. I think I feel like that after all after we do all the books is that like we talk through and I like know who the the book that what reader the book is for. I think that happens to me all the time with the Magic Fairy X-Men. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> which is still my favorite life moment. Oh my gosh. I totally I read the whole them. thing. All of them. I read all did of you them. really? Oh, you did? Don't spoil it for me. Don't spoil it for me. I won't. I'm almost it's done with the second one. I don't, no words. Okay. Like yeah. Thanks for that, really. So our next book is going to be Bayou Magic by Jewel Parker Rhodes. Um, and it is about mermaids and i it's clearly my selection because it's about mermaids um that is all you need to know about me <laughs> the only way it could be more of a jennifer book is if there were also dragons in it that's fine um we work with what we got so but yes that there will be our next dragons. one and have you read it already no i'm just saying that there are sea dragons in, in the water so there are dragons there, there. <laughs> it's like a factual <laughs> There are sea dragons. Maybe it, I would accept that they live in bayous. Yes, <laughs> Mississippi sea dragons or Mississippi river dragons. Yes, head cannon accepted. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, but yes, <laughs> that was <laughs> book. Um, time, time, and date to be determined. So, um, but thank you for watching. If anybody but us is watching this, um, we hope you enjoyed our processing, our thoughts on Saving Red. Um, and Cthulhu, if you are out there still listening to us, I hope you really enjoyed this too. And I'd love to hear your thoughts about this <laughs> wonderful book. So, <laughs> good night, everybody. <laughs> oh, no. I didn't hear it, which means.